Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at geologic time. So in this video we're going to be thinking about why do geologists investigate geologic histories for an area and this is going to correspond to section 9.14 of your textbook. So, of course, the first thing to remember is that geologists are a bit of a strange bunch. When we see a rock, we naturally want to understand how and why that rock formed. And so that you know, really helps to explain why geologists are so obsessed with working out the history uh, for an area. It's just something we like doing for fun. It does, however, have serious implications that we can use this information for other reasons rather than just our own academic entertainment. So, for instance, if we are concerned about how often a volcano erupts and the hazards that it might uh, might cause, what we can do is we can actually go and date different lava flows associated with that volcano. And by dating these lava flows, we can essentially come up with a history of how often the volcano erupts. And so if we notice that the volcano typically erupts every you know, 2 million years, however, the volcano doesn't appear to have erupted for the last 10 million years, well, we can probably assume one of two things. Either the volcano is now extinct, it's not going to erupt anymore, or there could be a really big eruption coming. We can also use our um, our observations to get an idea about how likely things like fault movement are to occur. And of course, this is very important when we're thinking about earthquakes. So if we look at this diagram here, we can quite clearly see we have a couple of faults, one right here and one right here. So this particular fault scarp here is what's referred to as a fresh fault scarp. It's relatively new. There's no rubble built up along the bottom. So we know that this earthquake here, or this fault movement, which would result in an earthquake, has to be, geologically speaking, very recent. Now, if we look at this fault scarp here, we can see that uh, this fault scarp is clearly older. Now, we can tell this straight away because the fault scarp itself has been eroded, producing a pile of rubble at the foot of the fault scarp. So we know it must be older than the fault scarp up here. We can also see that a lava flow has come along and it's actually run along the edge of this eroded fault scarp. And so this is going to help us to date when this fault scarp was last active, because clearly the fault moved, creating the fault scarp. And then after that, the lava flow came in. So we can use the lava flow to work out right. What was the last possible time when this fault could have moved? And so if we can see right, OK, this fault tends to move, you know, once every million years. And it's been once again, three million years since it last moved there's a good chance the fault could move and there could be an earthquake. We can also use our observations to work out how often a river will flood and how extensive those floods can be. So by looking at the number of layers of sedimentary rock and by looking at the extent of layers of sedimentary rock associated with flooding, as I said, we can work out, does this river flood every year? Does it flood every 10 years, 100 years? And when it does flood, exactly what kind of area tends to get inundated? And of course, that's going to be very, very important when it comes to things like planning for insurance and planning for natural disasters. Now, the other thing that working out geologic histories uh, is very important for is the uh, extraction of economic resources from the earth. And this can be things such as oil and gas, it can be metals, or it could be groundwater. Essentially, by having a good knowledge of an area, you can work out right. Are there any rocks in this area that could possibly host oil or gas? Or maybe they could host copper mineralization, or maybe this uh, layer of rock is nice and permeable. And so it's likely that water will move through it. So it would make a natural aquifer. And it's only by having a good understanding of how your area developed that you can actually work out the likelihood that there may be something, you know, which you can economically extract and make some money. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching and have a good day.